So hopefully that's happening now. Okay, great. All right. Good morning, everyone. It is great to see your faces. I'm seeing a lot of faces and that makes me really happy. Uh, and I'm so happy that you were able to join us on Zoom this morning. That seems like it's it's working. You found the link and, and you managed to join, so that's great. All right, well, we're this is our agenda this morning. We'll start with a, a welcome and some introductions as usual and a few announcements. And then we'll do our brainstorming, which is your time to um, just let us know what's happening in your world. Uh, we, we like to hear what's going on, um, you know, as people are working through this weird COVID time, how you've managed to manage that. Um, we like to hear about uh, difficult cases that you're struggling with and see if we can provide some, some help and some crowdsourcing. Um, we like to hear about updates to previous cases that you may have talked about, um, see how those are going. Uh, if you have any new resources you've come across, uh, this is a great time to share that. We, we like to hear about any opportunities for quality improvement in your organization and also any motivational interviewing opportunities you've had. So um, that's, that's our, our time slot from about 8.45 to 9. And then our, our focus today for the main part of the meeting is certainly the, um, the topic of asthma. And we're excited to have a number of different um, programs being represented. Uh, so we get to learn about a lot of asthma related stuff today. We try and do this about once a year um, to talk about what's happening in Utah with asthma. And then we'll wrap it up. And um, I, I think that there's something else going on today. I, I, I hear it's starting around 10. So we'll try and, uh, <laughs> we'll try and wrap up promptly, uh, maybe even a minute or two early. So we're, again, we're really grateful that you're here. All right, so let's go ahead and do introductions. Um, it's gonna be uh, maybe a little different today since I'm looking at a different way of, of seeing who's on the line, but hopefully I can identify you and ask you to unmute yourself if you're muted and, and uh, just do a quick introduction, tell us your name and where you're from uh, and your role. So I'm Mindy Tuller and I manage the Medical Home Portal and I facilitate this meeting, the Utah Children's Care Coordination Network. And let's see if I can figure out how to go through all of this. We'll go here. All right, so um, I'm gonna go, it looks like I'm gonna go in alphabetical order. And I've got actually got someone on a phone um, who is the very first one. So if you are calling from 801-718-0490, can I ask you to unmute and tell us who you are? And sometimes this can be tricky. Um, if you have the ability, you probably don't have the ability to do anything on chat. So that's all right. Um, we'll just uh, hope to figure out who the the phone call person is. And next I have Angela Zhu. I'm probably not saying that right. I apologize. Angela, do you mind unmuting and introducing yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Angela Zhu. I am the research coordinator um, up in the University of Utah with the eAsthma Tracker program. So Angela is going to be talking with us later, and we're really happy that you can join us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next is Athena Parker. Hi, Athena Parker. I'm with the Medical Home Portal, and I um, maintain the Utah Service Provider Directory as well as work with some of our state partners. Good morning, Athena. All right, and I see Brian Stone. Hi, I'm Brian Stone. I'm uh, at the University of Utah. I'm a pediatrician, a hospitalist there, and also work on the Asthma Tracker Project. I'm Welcome. Thank you for being here. That's great. Okay, next I see Cassie Crane. Yeah, this is Cassie Crane. I'm a care coordinator at Wasatch Pediatric South Point. Welcome, Cassie. All right, Dora. Hello, I'm Dora Rakenna, professional relations coordinator at Shriners Hostels for Children in Salt Lake. Welcome, Dora. And Eric Christensen. Hi there, Eric Christensen. I manage the Integrated Services Program with the Utah Department of Health. Terrific, thanks, Eric. And Aaron Shoemaker. 
Hi, I'm Erin Shoemaker, and I'm the administrative assistant for the Medical Home Portal and also assist with the uh, UCCCN meeting, this one. Welcome, Erin, and it looks like next is Gina Polamani. Hi, I'm Gina, and I'm one of the family advocates that works with UCCM and Medical Home Portal. Gina could just be one of those people with one name only. Gina. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Gina. Thanks for being here. And Heidi Bates. Hi, I'm Heidi Bates. I am one of the QI coaches. I work for UPIC. Um, and I am on the, I'm the lead for the asthma. So you'll be hearing from me a little bit later today. Great. Welcome, Heidi. And Ileana. Hi, I'm Ileana. I'm from Southwest Children's Clinic and I'm the clinic manager at the clinic. Glad you're here. All right, next I see Jade Porter. Hi, this is Jade with University of Utah Health Plans at Care Management. Glad you're here. Hopefully we get you for a little longer today. It's true. Our other meeting was canceled, so we're excited to have our, our Medicaid team here anyway today. Oh, that's great. Wonderful. Terrific. Yeah. Okay. Next, I see someone who has just the name Janet. Yes, I'm Janet Espinosa, and I'm also from Southwest Children's Clinic. I'm the care coordinator and working on the asthma project. Wonderful, welcome. All right, and I see someone else with one name and is it Jocelyn? That person's on the phone. Sometimes that can be a little tough too. Oh, she might not have, yeah, the ability to chat. Jocelyn's my teammate with the, with the Medicaid team now. We're taking on the pediatrics and adults at this point um, with the University Health Plans Healthy You Medicaid. Okay, that's good to know, Jade. That's okay. Welcome, Jocelyn. We're glad you could join. Next, I see Natalie Allen. Hi, um, I am the nurse practitioner and I work for Integrated Services Program, um, Eric's team, and I also teach at the University of Utah. Welcome. Always good to have you, Natalie. Great. And then I see Nikki. So Nikki is a, a care, is a nurse up at uh, PCB Pediatrics in Bountiful. Right, right. Thanks, Gabby. And she might not have the ability to talk uh, at the moment. No problem. Welcome, Nikki. Glad you're here. All right, next I see Rebecca Cialino. Yep, Cialino is how you say it. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm nurse care manager at the Farmington Clinic with the University of Utah. So, yeah. Glad to have you. Glad Thanks for here. having me. Yep. Okay, I see Savannah Smith. Hi, um, I'm Savannah. I am the program coordinator and evaluator for the asthma program at the Utah Department of Health. Wonderful. Welcome. Glad you're here. We appreciate that. All right. So, next I see. Um, T.D. Lambert. Uh, Tiffany Kiakonita from UBP Timpanogos office. Sorry, audio. <laughs> okay, great. Tiffany, we're glad you're here. Very good. Okay, I see somebody who is probably with the university. I just see their, their university ID number. Not sure if they're able to no, no video, maybe a phone caller. That's okay, all right, and I see Walt. Good morning, I'm Walt uh, with the Integrated Services Program and I'm a, cord, a care coordinator uh, in Salt Lake City. Always happy to have you, Walt. Okay, it looks like I missed a couple of people, so I'm going back to Patty Brown. Hi, my name is Patty. I'm a nurse care manager at the Sugar House Clinic uh, for the University of Utah. Welcome. Wonderful. All right, I'm checking. All right, it looks like um, Dr. Norland has joined us. I'm Chuck Norland, general pediatrician at the U and director of the medical portal. 
Terrific. Glad you're here, Chuck. Um, looks Amy, like the, U, the UID number just wrote, I am Brooke Bastar, a, a nurse, a registered nurse care manager for the University of Utah at the Sugar House Health Center. I am the UIAB. Okay, great. Great. Brooke. Thanks, Brooke. <laughs> Very good. And I think Angie Richens is with us. Looks like she's on the phone, so she might not be able to. Um, Angie is in Alpine Pediatrics, I believe. All right, and Jill, I don't want to miss Jill Connor. Hi, good morning. I'm Jill. I'm uh, Dora's colleague at Shriners Hospitals for Children in the Business Development Department. Excellent. Very good. All right. I, I see another person on the phone, Evelyn. And I'm not sure, Evelyn, if you have a chance to to tell us who you are, introduce yourself. That might not be possible on the phone and that is fine. Okay, one more person and then I'll wrap this up. I see Sherilyn. Uh, my name's Sherilyn. I am the nurse care manager at Intermountain Pediatrics in American Fork. Great, welcome, glad you're here. All right, very good. Oh, and Gabby Paragoshi, I'm one of the QI coaches at UPIC. <laughs> Thanks, Gabby. I, I was just about to remember you. <laughs> and Gabby's, yeah, Gabby's my technical help today as well as uh, being part of the, the main presentation. So thanks. Thanks, Gabby. All right. So you guys are, are realizing, as am I, that we are now using Zoom as our platform. And um, just like with GoToMeeting and probably all of them, you're certainly welcome to join by phone. Um, you're certainly welcome to, to join by just computer audio. I think the, the best experience typically is to try and do it on a, a, a device uh, like a computer. And of course, we always love to see your face if that's possible. So, and as I mentioned, we're gonna end promptly on time today. All right, so we have a couple of announcements. Um, I will be sending these out uh, after the meeting. Um, I always hesitate to bombard you with a lot of emails all at the same time, so I have waited on these, but um, I will send them out today so that you're aware that there is a three-month learning collaborative um, going on uh, through both the Utah um, and Montana chapters of the AAP, and it is about um, figuring out how to, to use telehealth, really. And so it's a three month uh, deal. So it's really gonna be taking place um, in February, March and April. And I guess uh, you'll need to sign up by the 24th of this month if you're interested. So again, I will send more information about that right after this meeting, if you're, if you're interested in uh, participating in that learning collaborative around telehealth. There's also a Zoom event coming up on the 27th of January. And this is um, certainly bigger than just Utah. It's being put on by the Courageous Parent Network. And it's an event for siblings of children who have um, uh, serious illness and medical complexity. So, so very serious um, kind of end of life sort of, sort of thing. And so if that's something that might be relevant for any of the families that you work with, um, more information will be coming out about uh, that Zoom event. Um, and I'll send that out today. All right, we always try and take a few minutes to let you know what's been updated on the medical home portal. And we do have some clinical content that is either new or, or updated. So we actually have a, a new page on a, a new newborn disorder that's been added to um, the, the screening. And I probably can't say it, adrenoleukodystrophy, ALD. So that's been uh, added to the medical home portal in our newborn disorder section. Um, we also have updated our Fragile X and Sickle Cell Disease Diagnosis Modules. And I believe that there's some, some important updates in particular with the sickle cell disease um, around new treatments. So that's, that's great. And then we've also updated pages on HIPAA and FERPA in our um, content that's more focused for families. And we've updated our page on financing your child's health care. And my cat is joining me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your time and we really encourage you to take advantage of it. We've got a lot of smart people, experienced people on the line. And if you have um, or are experiencing any difficulties with cases where you, you could use some help from, from someone else, some ideas 
um, thinking outside the box or just someone who's, you know, gone through that sort of thing before, this is a great time to bring that up. And as I mentioned at the top, we also love to hear new resources. We love to hear about quality improvement. Um, anything at all, this is your time. So I'm going to go ahead and be quiet and turn it over to anyone who'd like to speak. Mindy, this is Dora at Shriners. I just have a little sneak peek of something that's coming. Um, our, I don't know if anyone on the call remembers that we have a beach chair loaner program. Our therapy department is actually purchasing some Josie jogging strollers. And that's going to also be a loaner library program. We're working on a flyer and when that comes with details and sizes, we'll have uh, different sizes. Um, something that families that are usually that uh, have kids that in wheelchairs or children that get tired but um, that's something that um, was always needed so it's coming as we that's speak wonderful. okay thank you Dora so I'll update you with with a flyer when we have that ready for everybody very good and of course I'm always happy to send that out in between meetings um, if you if you've got that information we'll get it sent out that's great great news all right, thank you. Hey, this is Eric. I'm gonna jump on the loaner library bandwagon and follow Dora with uh, some information we have within our integrated services program. We were awarded a grant a couple months ago from um, National Association of Maternal Child Health Programs through HRSA. We were able to purchase approximately 30 Chromebooks and um, Verizon hotspots that we are able to loan to families so that they can hopefully have an easier time connecting with telehealth. Let me tell you how these are distributed though. 30 of each distributor around the state does not mean we have a big hotbed in any one location, but let me tell you where we place these. We have um, a handful in San Juan County. So the, um, and these were sent to the San Juan County Health Department. We, uh, we sent some to Central Health District, so they are in Richfield. And I know that comprises multiple counties, so you know, getting stuff out to some of these families could be a little bit dicey. Uh, the Southeast Health District, which for us would include Moab and Price and any families living um, also in Emory County, and then in um, Vernal, uh, Duchesne area, so the Tri-County area. We have a handful that are going to the Utah Parent Center in the next day or two. And then um, I drop some off on Saturday in Provo, I'm sorry, in Ogden to our care coordinator, Tony Estrada. Uh, it's pretty simple to use the equipment. Uh, there is basically um, an agreement that family signs to say they'll take really good care of the equipment. And uh, we are happy to loan this stuff out and we will try to facilitate through our care coordinators to get that to families who need that. So if that's something you think your families could benefit from, um, please let us know. Even if you're in somewhere slightly far flung, we will see what we can do. If this works out well, we're hoping maybe we can expand this and purchase a few more devices over the next several months. And uh, I will send information to Mindy uh, in a little while that she can uh, include with today's meeting minutes. I will. That's exciting. Thank you, Eric. Great. I just want to reiterate that if for any reason you want to put something in the chat, you're very welcome to do that as well. Well, I guess I have one. We have had a few fam, well, a few different suppliers who've all said that they there's just a national shortage of gloves. Has anyone 
got a great source <laughs> for gloves. That's a good question. Is anybody else experiencing difficulty getting gloves? Well, if if something sparks in your in your mind um, and you want to let me know um, after this meeting, we'll certainly get that information out to you, Jade. Oh, Gabby's raising her hand. Yes, Gabby. <laughs> I think you might be muted, Gabby. <laughs> ah, <you> no. Know. <laughs> so uh, we have one response. Uh, yes, I do ordering here for our office and haven't been able to get them for months. Um, let me see. Got it. No, my computer doesn't work. That's and Tiffany. Yeah. Tiff yeah. Oh, yeah, this is Tiffany. Yeah. And Nikki is also asking, uh, where can a patient get a kit walker? P PCH does not know. Primary Children's Hospital does not know. Kid walker. Does anyone know more about a kid walker? Most DME companies have them. I think Alpine does carry those. Alpine DME, okay. 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 Or are you wanting like a free walker? That's the type the parent told me it was called. Uh, that's what Nikki, Nikki responds. Um, so it must be, it's called the kid walker. Okay, maybe we can do a little research into that too. Mm -hmm. And then Jill wants to remind everyone, Shriners Fracture Care Hotline is avail available for fracture referrals. And she puts a call uh, and or text number in there. I'm sure you're gonna put it in the resource send out. Sure. Afterwards, yeah. Right. Thank you for that reminder, Jill. Okay. All right, well, I guess I will throw out this question. Are people getting vaccinated? That's a good question. Do we have anyone who's managed both vaccinations? Uh, Tiffany says, yes, I did just one so far. Uh, Janelle wrote, yes, me. <laughs> okay. Well, that's exciting. Okay. Second vaccine next week, uh, Ileana. Yes, Ili, go for it. Uh, uh, the staff, very good. So, yep. And Nikki says she's gotten one, but she can't get signed up for the second. Uh, I know, it's that's my fear too for myself. And providers at Southwest mm -hmm. has have received both. That's great. Kelsey's going to get her second next week. Okay. Whew. All right. Well, I know that it's still pretty dark. Sherilyn, I think it'd be great. Can I ask a question? Yeah. This is Heidi with you, Pick. I was just going to ask Dr. Norlin, um, because right now they're only, you know, rolling out the vaccines to adults. Um, what is the thought about the vaccine for children? I know that I want to say I read something about they were doing a study for kids and if he's heard any, any updates with that. As far as I know, the uh, they are start, starting. They have started to study in kids under 16. What the time frame for those clinical trials will be, I'm not sure. I assume that they will be somewhat uh, expedited. So I would hope within another couple of months we'd have good data on those. Um, but that's that's about about all I know. I would mention that tomorrow's grand rounds at primary uh, primary children's grand rounds will be Andy Pavia um, talking about. COVID vaccines and many of the issues. So I imagine he will have uh, more updated information than I. So anybody who's interested, uh, you know, I, I'd encourage you to, to watch that Grand Rounds if you can. And they, they always record them. And um, we, we can send out the, uh, the link to where you can find the recorded 
grand rounds if you can't watch them uh, watch it live tomorrow morning. Yeah, that would be great. I'd be very interested to see <clears throat> um, to hear more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sure. Merlin. Sure. I can make sure that that information for the, the live ground rounds gets sent out today for anyone who's interested and then, then we'll include the link for the recording in our summary of the meeting, the resources of the month. Well, I'll go ahead and add it in the chat in just a few minutes. Oh, thanks. Great. Okay. And this is Gina. I'll just mention that um, I know that many of the parents and like the Utah Parent Center Disability Law Center are working with um, like Medicaid and the health department to ask about getting the vaccines, you know, when there are new lots available for parents that are caring for the most vulnerable populations because they are actually right now, if they are fortunate enough to be on um, the DSPD waiver and supposedly this is coming with the technology dependent waiver, they're being paid as caregivers during COVID. <coughs> Excuse me as I choke. Um, so that hopefully something will um, go forward because we know that there's a lot of people that have been vaccinated already that are not in direct um, contact with some of the most vulnerable populations, whether that's uh, children with um, disabilities, special health care needs, or the elderly population. So they're making a pretty good case to um, the health department and other states have gone forth with um, doing some of those vaccinations for those that are doing the major portion of the caregiving. That's Thanks. good news. Yeah, that's good to know. Thanks, Jean. Okay. Yeah, let's hope that, that something comes of that. All right, anybody else? Okay, well, thank you for your comments and questions. And um, I guess we will move now to our main uh, part of our meeting. So I'm going to switch. Um, I'm going to switch screens. Well, I'm going to switch slides. So give me just a moment. I'll pull up the new slides. That's not what I was trying to do. Let's try that one more time. <clears throat> Not quite sure what's going on. That's not what, what are you trying to do because those are the slides. So what oh, are, are you, you seeing them? Yeah. Okay, great. For that's not good though, because I'm not seeing them. <laughs> Since I'm the one who needs to there we go. I think I figured it out. I'm the one who needs okay. to do the, the advancing. The advancing. All right. So I'm gonna mute myself and then I'm also gonna try and put this in presenter mode and we'll see what happens. All right, and Gabby, I'm sorry. I, I might need you to do the introductions. I'm afraid I don't probably have that right in front of me. Is that okay? Yeah, no problem. Great. So yeah, so we would like to do a short presentation uh, on the Utah Asthma Program on the D Department of Health. And then we're gonna talk about the Utah Asthma Home Visiting Program. And then also, of course, we have to talk about UPIC and the UPIC's Asthma Learning Collaborative of 2021. And then we have the honor of Angela joining us and she will introduce you guys to the e-asthma tracker, which is actually a pretty cool tool. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Savannah, who is from the Utah Department of Health Asthma Program. Thank you, Gabby, happy to be here. Um, hi, everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Savannah Smith. I am the program coordinator and program evaluator um, for the Utah Department of Health's asthma program. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do and why we um, why we do it. So can you move to the next slide, Mindy? Thank you. Um, as an overview, the Utah Department of Health's mission is to protect the public health public's health through preventing avoidable illness, injury, disability, and premature death, while assuring access to affordable quality health care and promoting healthy lifestyles. 
Our vision is for Utah to be a place where all people can enjoy the best health possible, where all can live and thrive in healthy and safe communities. Next slide. Um, our asthma program at the Utah Department of Health's vision is to improve the lives of those with asthma. So our mission is to make sustainable connections to improve the lives of those with asthma based on the following. Enhancing and developing partnerships, regularly conducting surveillance and evaluation of the burden of asthma in Utah, promoting the use of best practices, sharing resources, and facilitating open communication. Within our department, we also have a Utah Asthma Task Force that is comprised of many professionals, researchers, um, co-workers of mine who have an interest in asthma. Um, and so our mission is to um, work together to improve the quality of life for people with asthma. Alrighty, so before I get into our home visiting program, first I'm going to give a little bit of um, surveillance overview to define the problem of asthma in Utah. Next slide. Okay, so about one in 11 adults have asthma and about one in 20 children currently have asthma. Um, that's around a little over 258,000 people in Utah that are currently living with asthma. Next slide. Um, our asthma prevalence within the state is primarily comprised of those ages 50 to 64, non-Hispanic with an income of less than 25,000, female, um, those who live in the rural areas of Utah, and who are predominantly African American. Next slide. Okay, so this slide just reviews um, the current death deaths, asthma-related deaths in Utah from 2014 to 2018. So as you can see, Utah sits higher than the Healthy People um, Baseline and Healthy People 2030 target. So we have a lot of work to do um, and we are continuing to um, connect with families to provide them the best care possible within this state. Next slide. Okay. Um, you can go into the next slide, sorry. Okay, so uh, next we're going to dive into those with asthma that is uncontrolled. So currently we're looking at one out of five children and about one in three adults who are living with uncontrolled asthma. Next slide. Um, a cost, cost barriers are a main um, source related to asthma medication and whether it's controlled or not. Um, so about one in seven adults and one in 12 children cannot afford asthma medication. Next slide. Um, so about twice as many adults can't afford their asthma medication when compared to children. Um, and we see more Hispanics cannot afford their asthma medication when compared to, um, to whites. So those graphs display the percent and comparison. Next slide. Okay, so with that said, I'll dive into a little bit of an overview of our Utah Asthma Home Visiting Program. Next slide. So our Utah Asthma Program is no cost um, and we serve Salt Lake County and Utah County. Um, and we just recently were given the opportunity to serve Tri-County and Southeast um, the Medicaid population only. Um, like I mentioned, this is for all ages. So we do see some families who the parent and the child have asthma. So we are happy to serve both the parent and the child through our home visiting program. Next slide. So the target population for our home visiting program, um, two criteria have to be met. So you have to have persistent and uncontrolled asthma. You also have to have an ACT score of 19 or less. Um, and we view our data through um, ED visits or hospitalizations uh, within Utah. That's how we identify our areas that we um, can serve. And that's why we got our Medicaid grant because we were able to identify Medicaid claims to serve these families in Tri-County and um, Southeast. 
Next slide. Okay, so our home visiting program is comprised of three visits and two phone calls. So the first visit, um, we review just our general overview of asthma, basics, symptoms, triggers, et cetera. Um, second visit, we do a home environment assessment. And then our third visit is a follow-up. So just discussing progress, um, identifying and reducing more triggers. These visits are followed by two phone calls, which are um, primarily for data collection and to discuss any questions or concerns. Next slide. Alrighty, so let's dive into each visit. Um, during visit one, our health educators will review asthma symptoms, triggers, and medications with the families. They will also review inhaler techniques. Um, the reason our home visiting program is so important, um, especially for that first visit, is our educators can dive into how the child or the parent or both are using their inhaler. Um, they will also review if they are using their rescue medication more than they should to try and get their asthma under better control. We want to make sure that we're educating on their controller medication and ensuring that they are um, compliant with how they are using um, their meds. Next slide. All right, and during this visit, it's an initial time for us to um, review the different types of respiratory treatments while setting a few goals related to improving their asthma. So the home educator will um, review three goals, SMART goals that each patient would like to set, um, whether it be um, they will use their controller medication more frequently in the day, starting out with, you know, one more use a day or something like that. Um, so they really want to review um, steps that they will do to meet the goal. And our health educator is there to walk them through um, really just structured, time realistic, realistic goals for asthma management. Next slide. During this um, visit, it's an opportunity for our home visitors to uncover barriers as well related to asthma care. So whether that be insurance barriers or they do not have access um, to a doctor, um, we can refer to federally qualified health centers and we can refer them to various organizations that can help with um, obtaining insurance or if there's any questions related to um, medical resources or low cost clinics that they are able to go to seek care. Next slide. Okay, and during this visit, we also, um, we just implemented this past year, a social determinants of health screening questionnaire. Um, so it can help us uncover any other barriers that are um, that our patients are facing, whether it be home remediation, if there are, um, you know, if there's carpet that's out of date or curtains, things in the home that are triggers for asthma patients are huge. Um, and so we have partnered with our Green and Healthy Homes initiative in Salt Lake to connect them to um, receive some home remediation services as well as radon test kits, um, referring them to tobacco resources, domestic violence, et cetera. Um, during this visit one, we also have the opportunity to uncover if cost is a barrier. Um, we have a um, low cost medication or free medication assistance um, based off of income and family size. So we are able to make the appropriate referrals during this visit as well. Next slide. Visit two, we um, conduct a thorough home assessment to identify asthma triggers and set goals to reduce these triggers. Um, the most common triggers found in the home are pets, dust, um, wood burning fireplaces, um, and carpet curtains, things like that. So we uncover what, are, what their triggers are, where they're found in the home and what we can do about them. Next slide. 
um, we have two we have two assessments. We have the assessment conducted by our home visitor, and then we have um, kind of an assessment done by the patient. So they're creating goals and plans to reduce triggers um, that are identified through this visit. So you'll see on the left-hand side, the questionnaire is, conduct, is completed by our home visitor. And on the right side, we have um, a plan for our, um, our patients to complete. And um, it's, it's funny that the most commonly found trigger in homes is pets. And everybody knows that, but our pets are like our babies. So we do have a hard time with our, our home visitors um, getting rid of their pets. Um, I probably wouldn't get rid of my pet either if it were. <laughs> uh, next slide. Alrighty, so our last visit, visit three, we uh, conduct this six months after visit two. So during this visit, we discuss progress on the goals set in visit one and two on their plan to improve asthma control and their plan to reduce triggers. Um, we discuss their progress on controlling asthma and reducing triggers. Um, and we are able to kind of view their home to understand if they have made the changes that they need or if they need additional assistance, then our home visitor, or home visitor will work with them pretty thoroughly on, on next steps. So next slide. During this last visit, um, we are able to collect feedback, which is crucial for our program, especially with evaluation, um, to continue to make our program um, to meet the needs of the patients that we serve. So we will ask for feedback with each visit. You'll see on the left-hand side, um, the goal set during the patient, the goal set during each visit, um, triggers found like in visit two, and um, just ensuring that our home visitors are collecting the appropriate data. Um, key results, uh, we like to do an ACT visit one and three to assess if they had poor or uncontrolled asthma visit one, did that improve by visit three, um, and understanding if they are taking a control medication on a consistent and regular basis is um, very important to us. Um, if there are any additional follow-ups needed, such as um, control medications that are covered by insurance or Medicaid, um, we provide our patients with every resource imaginable to ensure that they are able to control their asthma compared to when they first started our program. Next slide. So just a quick overview of our 2018 to 2020 outcomes. So we're looking at 12 months before compared to 12 months after the program. So we have an increase in um, managing asthma and controller medication use. Um, we have a decrease in asthma-related hospitalizations, missed work days, asthma-related ED visits, missed school days, and unplanned doctor visits. So in this two years of our program, 87% of participants maintained asthma control 12 months after the program, which is great. Um, can you run to the next slide, please? So like I mentioned at the beginning of our presentation, we serve Southeast Utah, Salt Lake County, Utah County, um, and Tri-County. Currently, um, Utah County, Andrea Jensen is the home visitor, Catherine Miller is for Southeast, and Brittany Perry is for Salt Lake. So if you or any of your families um, would be eligible for this program, please take down um, their contact information or my contact information is just on the next slide. Um, so we can make the appropriate referrals and um, ensure that patients, your patients or anyone you know um, receives this amazing opportunity, this no cost home visiting program um, to improve their asthma. And I think my contact info is just on the next slide if you wanna, yep. So um, if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to shoot me an email. Um, I did wanna note, we, like I mentioned at the beginning of my slide, we have an asthma task force and Jade is actually on our asthma task force along with some other folks in the call. Um, and so 
Nikki, any ideas of moving the program to Davis County? Yes, um, we hope that within the next coming years, we can move this program to Davis County since we are funded by the CDC. Um, our funding is dispersed a little bit differently since we're not a state funded program. Um, and so backtracking to asthma task force, if you or any one of your colleagues would like to be on our asthma task force, um, we have quarterly meetings. This coming February is our, um, is our next quarterly meeting where we will actually be having Angela from the eAsthma Tracker and her team present. I'm not sure if Brian Stoner or Flory is presenting yet, but we also have one of our research members, Daniel Mendoza. He's going to be presenting on COVID um, and the asthma correlation in the minority population. So should be an interesting meeting. I'm just gonna open up the chat really quick. Um, I noticed any ideas of moving, yep, to Davis County, hopefully in the next little while, Nikki. Um, definitely take down my contact info um, and we can be in touch and we can see what we can do if you have any patients within that area. Um, yes, Athena, the program is in Tri-County as well. We are going through some staffing changes, but if you are interested, um, send me a direct email and we can get you um, connected with the appropriate contact. Their health educator is going through a job transition. I didn't want to put his his contact info there um, just in case something changes. So if anyone has any other questions, please let me know. You can chat me in here or you can send me a direct email and I'm happy to connect with you. Thank you. Thank you, Savannah, that was great. All right, Gabby, should I advance this? Yeah, no, next slide, yes, please. <laughs> All right, so um, so this is Gabby speaking, and before Heidi talks about UPIC's latest asthma project, I would like to introduce the UPIC team to you and talk a little bit about quality improvement. So the acronyms UPIC uh, stands for Utah Pediatric Partnership to Improve Healthcare Quality. So we are a team of three, so you can see here uh, Diane, Dr. Lou is the director of UPIC and she also works as a pediatrician at the University Pediatric Clinic and at the University Pediatric Sugar House Clinic. And then there's Heidi and me, so we are the QI coaches, quality improvement coaches, meaning that we are really the boots on the ground. So it, we go into the clinics and we you know, work with um, the, the staff at clinics to improve some healthcare qualities. So our aim and mission is to promote evidence-based practices and assist providers, care coordinators, MAs, and other supporting staff members in implementing quality improvement at the practice level. Mindy, please, next slide. So the first question I want to ask you is, why should you or I care about quality improvement? For some people, it might sound a bit boring or other people might think QI is something that comes down from corporate offices or main administrations, um, and which could be true for large healthcare organizations. But I would like to encourage you to approach quality improvement more as an attitude on how to make things better. So my next question is, if we have the attitude, how do we actually improve? How do we use quality improvement to make care better? Next slide, please, Mindy. So the Institute of Healthcare Improvement, or IHI, uses the model for improvement as the framework to guide improvement work. And we at UPIC, we follow the same model, we follow this model. And this model consists of two parts. The first part consists of three fundamental questions. Question number one, what are we trying to accomplish? Meaning, what are you going to improve and by how much do you want to improve? Second question is, how do you know if a change is an improvement? Well, so we need to measure things and that will tell us if the changes we are making are actually leading to an improvement. And the third question is, what changes can we make that will lead to the improvement? To start, we want to test just one change with what is called the PDSA cycle. And that gets us into the second part of the IHI model. The PDSA cycles 
stands for the plan, do, study, act cycles with plan, plan the test, meaning plan how to, proce how to proceed with a change, do the test, carry it out and collect the data, and then study the test results, meaning analyze it, and then act based on those results. Decide your next step, either adapt, adopt, or discard. Fine tune the changes based on what you are learning. And that's how the PDSA cycle keeps on rolling until you reach the breakthrough results you are seeking. Simple, right? Well, it is powerful and it actually works. And with that, I will hand over the presentation to Heidi. She will tell you all about our latest Asthma QI project. And hey, thanks guys so much for listening to me. All right, thanks Gabby, I appreciate you. Um, it's, always, it's always good to um, work with you because you bring so much knowledge. Because um, oh, I've only been here, you know, oh, can you believe it? I've only been, I've been with you pick for almost a year. Been in the office a month. <laughs> yeah, and then COVID, yeah. <laughs> so, but thanks Gabby. So our uh, UPIC Learning Collaborative, um, currently we have five practices throughout Utah um, that are collaborators. Um, this collaborative, uh, we have two practices that are in Carbon County, um, so that's pretty exciting. We get to hit that rural area, and then two in Salt Lake County, and one um, one is in Utah County, and they have two locations that they'll be um, trying to implement uh, this uh, their change their change process. Um, we offer MOC Part Four, so two providers um, are joining to get that MOC Part Four. And then three clinics are PCMH accredited. And so this uh, asthma learning collaborative will help with their mandatory QI requirement because it, that is a NCQA, um, um, what do I wanna say, a, U, a requirement for NCQA. Next slide, please, Mindy. So in this learning collaborative, we're gonna improve evidence-based primary care management of asthma. Um, enhance collaboration with specialists for kids with poorly controlled asthma, monthly education webinars. We had uh, last month, we had some, a great um, talk. She is Dr. Jackie, okay, Savannah, Dr. Jackie Agrari Sabet. Yeah. <laughs> Ferrari, <laughs> Agrari Sabet. She is um, an amazing uh, doctor. She's a pediatrician and she just, had some great knowledge um, about pediatrics and also about um, COVID too and how, it, and how it's going to affect the asthma um, population. So it was really, really good. And then just this last, uh, last week, we had one, um, Dr. Heather Howe, she's an adult pulmonologist um, with the University of Utah. And um, she, she brought some great, great information to um, our clinics as well. And then we're gonna leverage public health um, education resources for patients and families to improve self-care. And that's, we're gonna, we're collaborators with the Utah Department of Health, um, the local health departments. Um, Catherine down in uh, Southeast County, Carbon County, she's the one that was pretty instrumental in getting the two from um, the rural, that Carbon County area to join, which is fantastic. And then we do use the home visiting program, which has been proven, like Savannah had said, to um, increase compliance and then reduce ED visits and things like that with kids. And then um, we, it's shown that we've enhanced quality improvement skills and knowledge throughout the clinics that we've worked with. And then we also, every month we have team lead calls and that gives a chance for all the, the clinics that are involved in this learning collaborative to actually share what they've learned with other practices. And so maybe some other practices have been struggling with like, how are we gonna do this? For example, telehealth, um, how are we gonna you know, get telehealth asthma? How are we gonna get the parents to do you know, their ACT and a telehealth visit? How much time do we need? And so they may be struggling with that. And then we have a clinic that has it down. And so, it's just a shared learning collaborative with other practices, which um, I know that they found pretty, um, pretty important as well. All right, next slide. Okay, so our measuring, um, this is our 
measures. Um, we always have two core measures with our learning collaborative. Um, we do, um, well, I guess this is, sorry, what we're gonna, what we're doing. We're measuring and reporting quality of care. We have um, med medications, devices, and up-to-date guidelines um, just came out with new guidelines. Um, and then we try and get um, some, Savannah was instrumental in getting uh, some um, like uh, practice inhalers and things like that, that I get to give out to the clinics here in the next week. Um, some of our talks are gonna be understanding the impact of um, environmental factors and or viral illnesses like COVID. Um, and then we have this new tool that we're gonna be rolling out to those clinics. It's the e-asthma tracker. Um, and I, I really, this is a, it's a great tool that they can use as a registry, but I really think if it's adopted um, in a clinic, it will, it will also reduce ED visits and reduce uh, like missed school days, even though most school days are home or even, you know, missed work days, uh, working from home. And then at the end, we always will have a sustainability plan. We'll work with each clinic, get a sustainability plan um, and make sure within six months of the end of the collaborative um, that they're still doing what they had put into place. And then maybe if they hit some bumps in the road, we can help um, work that out. All right, next slide. All right, so these are our um, core measures. So number, our first core measure is the um, asthma control level assessed by a standardized tool. We get a percentage of patients that is a process. Um, and so it's the numerator is just the patients um, that are seen for asthma. During um, like that month, we usually get, we start with a baseline of 30 patients. Um, we kind of see how many actually had their ACT done and documented in the chart. Um, and then our denom denom denominator is that um, number of pa uh, patients seen during that, during that measurement goal. Our second core measure is um, percentage of patients with a current asthma action plan um, on file or given to the to patients. This is this is a, an important one for me because um, I don't know if a lot of a lot of you know that the um, the department. Um, Oh, what do I want to say? There is now, they went to legislature, it got approved that schools can have stock albuterol in the schools right now. So that means that if a child is having an exacerbation and the um, school has an, an active, um, an asthma action plan on file that's current, they're allowed to give a dose of albuterol instead of calling 911. So right now, um, if they don't have an asthma action plan, the school has to call 911 for um, an exacerbation. So this, I am trying to push these, these clinics to get an asthma action plan in place and give it to the school. So um, it'll help reduce the costs of that. Um, thanks Savannah. Savannah put the information for the stock albuterol. Um, and I'm also on that, on that um, collaborative as well. And then two optional measures, again, percentage of asthma patients receiving the flu vaccine, um, because we all know that that's helpful for kids that have asthma, and then the percentage of patients that signed up for the EAT. I put this as a, um, just as an optional measure, just to see if they wanted to, when the clinics adopt this, um, to see if they want to just say, hey, how many did we get to sign up? How many are we missing? That type of thing. The other kind of measure I added um, and maybe it's not a measure, but since we're all in telehealth, I've been asking the clinics to mark down if their um, visits are telehealth visits or in-person visits, because I'm finding that uh, if they're telehealth, they don't have enough time to do the ACT and an AAP. So I'm helping one clinic um, right now with the telehealth visits. Um, so that's be good. All right, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I am done. And I'm going to turn it over to Angela Zhu and Dr. Stone for the electronic asthma track. And I think Grace is on, right? I am not sure. I don't think she's on today. Oh. You'll catch her another time. Thank you, Heidi. Thanks, Angela. 
Um, okay, hi everyone. Again, my name is Angela Zhu. I'm one of the project coordinators on the University of Utah e asthma tracker team. And uh, today I'm joined by Dr. Brian Stone, who has been a part of the e asthma tracker team since its conception. Uh, and I want to start off by saying thank you for letting us come to speak to you all today. Uh, we just wanted to provide a cursory introduction today to our asthma control tool, which is the electronic asthma tracker or the e-asthma tracker, and answer any questions you may have for us. Um, I know that some of you have already heard of the tool or been offered to use it at your clinic, which is great. Um, both the Utah Department of Health asthma program as well as UPIC are partnering with us on our project to help disseminate and implement the e-asthma tracker to clinics and patients in Utah. And we're really excited to talk to you all and continue growing our partnership with both UPIC and the Department of Health. Um, so to start off, what is the e-asthma tracker and why did our team create the e-asthma tracker? Uh, so as you can see on this page, the e-asthma tracker is a standalone HIPAA compliant web tool for individual and population level continuous and remote asthma control management. And as Savannah presented on just a little while ago, asthma is the most common pediatric chronic illness. And there are a lot of unmet needs of children with asthma, especially in the state of Utah. So our team created the EASA tracker in the hopes of mitigating or alleviating some of these harmful or disruptive impacts asthma can have. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so diving into a little more detail, uh, the e-asthma tracker can be accessed on either a computer or a cell phone. And although it is designed and geared a little more towards the pediatric population, uh, the tool can and has been provided to adult asthma patients as well. Um, and here are some of the specific features the e-asthma tracker offers. Um, and the rest of the slides will go through each bullet point in a little bit more detail. So the tool consists of a validated chronic asthma control measurement uh, patients receive automated reminders to use it weekly. There's also immediate graphic feedback given to patients. And we have a real-time alerting system that goes out to patients, parents, their primary care providers, and also care coordinators. Um, it's a really great tool for longitudinal data collection. And um, on top of all of those great features for patients, we also have a clinic patient dashboard for primary care providers and care coordinators to help monitor patients. Next slide, please. And this is just a quick note that the e-asthma tracker is also available in both English and Spanish, uh, so that to help you guys reach members of your community who may be more comfortable speaking Spanish. Next slide. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So the e-asthma tracker consists of a weekly asthma control questionnaire that your patients would fill out. The questionnaire is adapted from the asthma control test to capture weekly asthma control from patients or their parents. And it takes less than three minutes each week to complete, so it's super easy and quick. Um, if a patient or a parent forgets to answer it for a given week, they will be sent reminder texts or emails directing them to answer the questionnaire. And as you can see, these first five questions of the test assess how the patient's asthma symptoms were during the past week. Uh, next slide. Okay, and then the second page of the test displays their asthma score at the top and then asks the patient about any asthma treatments that they may have had for that week. Um, this includes compliance with controller medications they may have been prescribed, and then also additional information about possible acute exacerbations and need for unscheduled medical visits or missed school or work is also collected. And then the comments field at the bottom of the page allows the patient to track additional details about their asthma for that week. Uh, for example, did they encounter an environmental trigger such as pollen? Was the inversion especially bad that made their asthma flare up? And um, all of these answers and comments they submit will be tracked on their patient graph along with their asthma score. Um, and as you can see on this slide, the patient's asthma score is displayed at the top of the screen in a ribbon, in a ribbon, and the ribbon will either be green, yellow, or red, depending on our score. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, okay, so the e-asthma tracker provides the patients and anyone else that's monitoring them immediate graphic feedback of their asthma control for the week. So this is the asthma symptom tracker graph. 
and this allows them to view their asthma control over time. Uh, the asthma tracker categorizes the patient's asthma score into three different chronic asthma control zones, uh, very similar to the ACT, so a green zone for good control, a yellow zone for worsening control, and a red zone for poor control. And then each zone will give the patient a different recommendation for how to manage their asthma control, including referral to their asthma action plan if they're experiencing any acute problems. And then what's more, the e-asthma tracker has a really robust real-time alerting system. So if a patient submits a red zone score or two consecutive, two or more consecutive yellow zone scores, um, additional email and text alerts will be sent out to the patient, the clinic, the provider, and the care coordinator managing the patient according to the clinic's preferences. So these alerts help to prompt all parties in coordinating care for a specific patient, which is great. Uh, next slide. Okay, so the patient's asthma control graph will be fully accessible by the clinic and care coordinators monitoring the patient. Um, again, providers and care coordinators will also be alerted when a patient falls in the red or yellow zones, and providers can help with decision support to make sure patients are receiving the right treatment for their asthma. So in this patient example, um, sorry that the circles are a little off, the patient was struggling to manage their asthma control until they visited their doctor and their medication dosage was stepped up. And after their doctor's visit, their asthma control improved significantly in the following weeks. Uh, next slide. Okay. And then the e-asthma tracker can also help patients and providers in identifying asthma triggers. So you can see in this patient example, the patient struggled for several weeks trying to get control of their asthma symptoms and um, were finally able to identify their new family pet as the source of their symptoms. And they saw immediate improvement after they gave their cat away. Next slide. And the e-asthma tracker can also help patients and providers monitor a patient's asthma and take early action to avoid hospitalization before an acute asthma attack occurs. So in this patient example, the first time the patient saw a decline in their asthma scores um, indicated by the first circle, um, they were able to take early action with their doctor to prevent further worsening and the hospital visit. Um, however, soon after the patient stopped using the e-asthma tracker and eventually dropped into the red zone again. Um, leading to an acute exacerbation and a trip to the emergency room. Next slide. Okay, uh, and like I mentioned, the EASM tracker, um, and as you've seen here today, is, it's a really great tool to capture longitudinal asthma control. So it can help patients track their asthma scores over time, as well as the asthma treatment they've received. Um, you can see on this particular example, there's a bunch of different notations on the graph. Um, showing that this particular, when this particular patient has taken control of medications, when they may have gone to the hospital or doctor, so on and so forth, which is really helpful to see over a long period of time. And some longtime users have also been able to identify specific seasons of the year um, when their asthma control worsened and with their doctor proactively prevented those periods of difficult asthma control, which is really great. Next slide. Okay. And there's also a ton of additional features for patients on the e-asthma tracker, um, including motivational features to keep them engaged, as well as educational materials and activities for both parents and children. Um, and again, patients will be able to easily access the e-asthma tracker on their mobile devices as well. Uh, the picture of the computer screen on the left shows some examples of the motivational features we've added to the tool. And then the screenshots on the right show a glimpse of some of the resources and education we have linked on the website um, as displayed on a mobile phone screen. Next slide. Okay. Um, and then I mentioned that on the clinic side, we have a patient dashboard. So providers and care coordinators can easily manage, uh, monitor and manage all of their patients on the e-asthma tracker using our patient dashboard. 
So the patient dashboard shows all of the patients for a certain provider or clinic in an organized manner, and users will be able to quickly monitor a patient asthma control and dashboard and can follow up and keep track of self reminder notes for a patient within the e asthma tracker as well. Um, some additional features so anyone in the clinic can also view patients asthma graphs and scores. They can message patients within the e-asthma tracker system, and they can also sort patients by their asthma control status for easy monitoring using the patient categories that we have. And you can see on the slide above that for each patient, you can see their last four asthma questionnaire scores color coded and scored by what asthma zone their test was in. And um, black means that they did not complete the questionnaire for that particular period of time. So it's also a way for you to see whether or not your patients are even using the e-asthma tracker. Next slide. Okay, so in a previous study validating the tool, um, our team studied the clinical impacts of the EASA tracker with 325 patients at 11 different clinics. Um, and over time, they saw patients had improved asthma control, improved quality of life, and they also saw a reduction in child missed school days, a reduction in parent missed work days, as also, and also a reduced need for oral corticosteroids. Um, and then there was also a big reduction in um, emergency department or hospital admissions. And then um, they also saw a reduction in um, asthma related costs as well as overall healthcare costs, which is really great. And then um, there was no change in any patients that who, didn't, who did not use the e-asthma tracker when they compared it to controls. And the results of the study were published in um, the Journal of Pediatrics in 2019. Uh, next slide. Okay, so I did want to show you just a couple of data graphs from that study. So um, from the study, the e-asthma tracker team found that no, not only did patient asthma control and quality of life scores significantly improve after patients started using the e-asthma tracker, but that disparities in both asthma control and quality of life were also completely eliminated in minority groups during that year patients use the e-asthma tracker. So really cool stuff. And I believe that was my last slide, um, or there's probably one more, sorry. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, our team is ready for you know, large scale dissemination of the tool. We really are um, interested in further studying the public health impact of the tool. And um, you know, our team will work very closely with each clinic along with UPIC and help with ongoing support and training as needed. Um, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email or I can answer them here too if there's time. Thank you, Angela. Does anyone have any questions? I think the EASMA tracker is very cool. Yes. And um, Erica, the tracker is available in Spanish for your patients. Looks like that was in the chat. Yes, mm -hmm. great. Wonderful, thank you so much. And are there any questions for, for any of our presenters? Little on the quiet side. I, I guess I did have a, a question about the um, the home visiting program, and I'm, I'm not sure if anything was mentioned about how that's being handled with COVID. Yeah, great question. Um, so we are currently conducting um, like telehealth visits. So that is how we are handling that. Now. Okay, great. Great. All right, well, let's see. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and return to my other um, slides. Let's find those. Learning about Zoom, everyone. Hang on with me. <laughs> <laughs> Click to exit. There we go. Let 
Nope, still not seeing them. Well, I can tell you what they say. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm definitely learning about about Zoom today. So our, our slides simply say that we have our next meeting on February 17th next month. Uh, we'll be um, talking about what's happening with the legislature and how that impacts the populations that we serve and, and care about. Um, see if I can put my camera back on too so you can have something. There we go. All right. So again, yeah, we're, we're very grateful for all that we learned about um, asthma today. Uh, I think some of it was a perhaps a bit of a recap, but always an important one um, for for those of you who've been around before. Um, but we we certainly have some new people. And so that was very helpful. Particularly exciting is the eASthma tracker as a another, you know, tool in the toolkit. Um, so we'll make sure that all of the contact information for our um, presenters today goes out with our summary of the meeting. Um, I usually get that sent out on Friday, but you're always welcome to get in touch with me if you have questions before that information is, is widely disseminated. Um, and I'm always happy to, to help put you in contact with, um, with these uh, great folks who, who work in the uh, asthma programs for the state. And yeah, it's, it's really good news to hear that um, some of these programs are expanding as well. I know that'll be um, very helpful for uh, folks in other parts of the state. Asthma is certainly a problem. So unless there's any other comments or questions, um, it looks like we're gonna wrap up a little bit early today. I don't wanna cut anyone off before we're ready to be done. Let's check the the chat looks like we're good. Well, thanks again, everyone. We appreciate your, your joining us. Um, I promise I'll get better at Zoom and this will be our platform going forward and we'll we'll figure out some of the little hiccups. I've seen some comments um, that, that I need to address and I'll do that. Uh, thank you to our presenters and we hope you have um, a great rest of your day and we'll see you next month. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Take care, everybody.